Hello. It's good to see you. Today we're just gonna ramble. We're just gonna talk about some stuff. I had mentioned, I think last week, that I thought I had discovered the cause of my cough, so I wanted to tell you about that. And um, just general stuff, nothing in particular. Um, the first thing is my hair. This is what my hair does if I wash it. See, I went to my exercise class first thing this morning. And then I came home and I took a shower. And what I did was I just washed my hair. And then I put a little bit of this in it. It's an in, an in shower styler. It's from Living Proof and it's called Perfect Hair Day. It's not a, I'm not sponsored or anything. I actually, this is just something I use. It enhances texture and shine for air dried styles. So what you do is you put this on your hair after you shampoo it and condition it and your hair's still wet. I keep this in the shower. It's an in shower styler. So that's a good name for it, I would say. But yeah, I really like it. My hair does this weird wavy thing if I just let it air dry. Um, but this kind of enhances it and it does make your hair shinier and it gives it some nice texture and body so I don't know I just thought I would show you that um, so that's that's what I did I, I haven't even brushed it or anything I just put that stuff in it and you don't I don't follow the instructions on here I, I remember thinking that I do it a little bit differently than they say to do it okay okay so just shampooing condition as usual I don't have my glasses on then apply this product generously to coat hair from roots to ends while still in the shower. Lightly rinse. Now, I don't do that, and I don't use as much as they say. Um, yeah, well, they don't really say how much to use, but I just use about a, yeah, not a lot. You kind of have to play with it to figure out how much to use, and I don't rinse it. Um, and then you towel dry it and scrunch it up and let it air dry. But I don't rinse it after I apply it. They say to rinse it lightly. I don't do that. But you kind of have to play with it to figure out how much to use. The first few times I used a little bit too much. And it just made my hair crunchy. Um, but it's from Living Proof and it's called Perfect Hair Day. And the body and the texture remains even after you brush it out a little bit. I don't know. I just thought I would tell you about it. Um, so yeah, I went to my exercise class first thing this morning. And it was, we all night last night, we had this light rain. Every now and then you could kind of hear it, but for the most part it was, it was just a light rain, which is wonderful because I did finally get my, my yard uh, reseeded. They killed off all the grass and then they reseeded it a week ago, Friday. But see, after that, you have to water it every day. And you have to thoroughly water it. It takes about an hour and a half to water to do the, the back and the front properly. It takes about an hour and a half. So I do it. I get my kids to do it. But honestly, they don't water as thoroughly as I would like. So I usually end up having to go back out there anyway. So I've been out there every day because it hasn't rained since they seeded it. Well, finally last night... It started to drizzle a little bit. I was so happy because my water bill is going to be astronomical as it is because of all the watering we've had to do. Um, but at least I didn't have to do it today. So that was, that was great because all day today we just had this light soaking rain and it went on pretty much all day. But I went to my exercise class this morning and it wasn't raining when we got out there. See, it's outdoors. Um, it's just an informal class. There are a couple of people in the in the neighborhood that are, well, they have a, they have like day jobs, but they're also um, personal trainers part time, so they head up this class. Sometimes it's one, sometimes it's both, um, and so we we have to do it outside, you know, where we can be six feet apart and all that good stuff. And so, so we were out there, and um, it was overcast. It was very overcast. It looked like it would start raining any minute. But we decided to go for it, and it did. We did get rained on a little bit, but we just kept we just kept going. Um, they bring out his own, you know, little Bluetooth speaker, and uh, just play music. You know, it's it's like circuit training. And before I went to the first class, I thought, how hard can it be? I mean, 
you know, the, there's no equipment. There's, you know, you bring free weights and an exercise mat and a towel and some water. I thought, how hard can this be? Seriously. It kicked my butt. The first couple of weeks, I went three or four days a week. I thought I was going to die. I thought I would wake up in the morning feeling like I could not move. It's it's pretty intense. It's it's strength training. It's cardio. There's a lot of um, a lot of stuff like you see in CrossFit, minus the big tires and the ropes and stuff. We don't have any of that, but lots of burpees, lots of push-ups, lots of just you know, and it's fast-paced. There's really not. You get like a 10-second break between the exercises you do. So it's and it's an hour. So you're you're working out the entire hour. That you don't really get you get I mean you do get breaks so you're not going to die or anything but it really it's intense so I mean I you know because because of um COVID you know all the gyms were shut down they finally opened back up but I haven't been I'm kind of torn you know I, I I have a gym that I've been a member of for ever for years and um you know I, I I've thought about going back I want to go back but honestly, I'm really enjoying these classes, these informal classes that we do. I think I get a better workout there than I get at my gym, honestly, because I think, you know, working out with these, with these folks, they push you harder than honestly I would push myself at the gym because when I'm at the gym, I work out by myself, you know, and, and I don't push myself as hard. And I think, I think they've been great for me. Um... You know, it's it's not a lot of people. It's different every time. It just depends on who can who can go. Uh, we had a big, actually, a really big class this morning. When I say big, I mean there were like ten of us there, so that's that's big. <laughs> and uh, so, but I'm really enjoying these classes. They're hard, and I hate them when I'm doing them. It's uh, because it's it's tough. You know, you're you're hot and sweaty and tired at the end of it. It's a really good workout. But I, this, there was a point to this. I'm trying to remember what it was. I thought about this today when I went because there are s several people that go to this class and they're at every class pretty much. And you can tell these people work out a lot. They work out like eight days a week. They go, they go to uh, the Y, which has had programs, I think, throughout the whole COVID thing, but they... You have to meet certain conditions and they're outdoors. I don't know. But they go and do that. And then they also do this. And then they work out at home. And then they go jogging. I don't think these people do anything else. <laughs> like, all they, they live to work out. I'm not that way. I mean, they can just bounce and power right through these exercise classes. And I'm over there feeling like I'm going to die of a heart attack. You know, but what, what I wanted to tell you was, you know, don't... If you're trying to reach a goal, which for me... My goal was to just get in better shape and not, you know, because I wasn't exercising and I really felt it those first couple of weeks. I could really tell that I had not exercised in a while because it was rough. It was rough. Um, like we, we have to run laps sometimes, you know, well, not a lot of running, but there is some running and I couldn't run. I was so out of breath. Like I could not run. I said, this is pathetic. This is really bad. But it's better now. It's so much better. But I don't compare myself to those other people that are like professional workout people. I don't, I mean, you can just tell they're in excellent shape. You know, they're, and it's not because they're young. I mean, some of these people are, you know, a couple of the ladies are in, one is in her 60s. The other one is almost 70. They are in tip top shape. I mean, you can just tell they work out all the time. Which is awesome. I think that's great. I'm not saying anything's wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with it. But I don't compare myself to them. You know, when they're over there and they can do 50 push-ups in a minute, it, that's awesome. That's, that's amazing. I cannot do that. But what I do is I compare myself to how I did last time. Like, okay, I'm going to do push-ups this time. Let's see if I can do more than I did the last time we did push-ups. And we do push-ups pretty much every time. We do some. Um, every workout class is different. They do, they just do different stuff every time, which is good because if there's stuff you don't like doing, maybe you won't have to do it next time. Like I hate burpees. I'd never done, I, I didn't even know what that was before this class. 
I hate those things. I hate them. I do them, but I hate them. But I can do more now. I can do way more now than I could when I started this class. So that's what I look at. Even though I hate them, I can do more. <laughs> I can do more push-ups. I can do more of everything. And I can do them faster. And I don't quite feel like I'm going to die to the extreme that I did before. So that's what I do. So if you're trying to reach a goal, don't get bogged down looking at, oh, you know, this person is so much farther ahead. They're doing so much better. They're making, you know, they're, they're making progress fast. Don't worry about them. Don't look at them. Don't worry about them. I don't even look like I just, I forget everybody else is there. I just focus on what I'm doing and what the instructor is saying. Okay. This is what we're doing next because it moves really fast. So you really have to pay attention. Um, and, uh, wow, it's, it's something, you know, but don't worry about those other people. I was just remembering we did. I, most of the time out there, I look like an albatross having a seizure. It's really embarrassing. I'm glad nobody can see me. But we did this one class and I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's called this everywhere, but I think it's something they do at the Y. It's called Turbo. I'd never done it before. But it changes. The exercises change so fast. You do each exercise for like five seconds and then you're on to the next one and then you're on to the next one. And I would just get one down and they've already moved on to something else. And I'm just over here the entire time just like, I don't know what we're doing. I tried so hard to keep up. And every, see, the thing is, most of the other people in this class go to the Y and they do turbo there. So they're used to it. They know all the terms. They know how it goes. You know, she's calling out terms. Do this. Go to this. And I'm like, what is that? I don't know what that is. And I'm trying to watch her and do what she's doing. And by the time I get that figured out, she's already moved on to something else. And that was a very frustrating class. But I figured, you know, as long as I'm moving around it's got to be better than be just, than just sitting at home. So it's better than nothing. And I got a good workout, but I, I think most of the workout was just trying to keep up. <laughs> I was just trying to do whatever she was doing before she went on to something else. And it was, it was, um, it was tough, but that was, we only, we've only done turbo one time. We've done a bunch of other things. It's mostly just circuits of cardio and then strength training or you might do all cardio for an hour you may do stretching for 20 minutes and cardio for 40 or every time it's different i love it i love it so much i try to get my kids to go they don't want to go i should just make them go but um but that the, the thing i wanted to say was if you're trying to reach a goal don't worry about the other people around you don't worry about what they're doing there was a a saying, I think, I think it was Japanese and I can't remember exactly how it's worded, but I really like it and I'm going to get it wrong. But the gist of it is the flower doesn't look at it. The, the flower doesn't focus on the other flowers in the field. The flower just grows, you know, don't worry about all those other flowers. You just grow and do your thing. Don't worry about them. You know, it's, there's always going to be somebody who's better and faster and who has gone farther toward the goal than you. Don't worry about them. Don't worry about it. Focus on beating your personal best and doing better than you did yesterday. That's what I do. And, uh, and I love it. So for now, I'm still doing that. Um, but my gym is open. I, I got a call that they've opened back up. Um, but I haven't been, I, I don't know why I haven't, I thought I would be so excited to go back, but I'm really loving these classes. Plus, you know, I started a new job. I, th I just finished my second week on my new job. Um, the first week was basically just getting used to everything, um, getting my computer set up at home so that I could access their stuff on my computer and getting f becoming familiar with all their software, which is totally different from anything I've ever used. I was hoping that at least some of it would be kind of the same you know, compared to what I was using in my old job, but it's, it's all different. It's all completely different. That was kind of a bummer because now I'm, I'm going to have to get used to a bunch of different stuff, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. It's kind of frustrating though. And I think you run into this at any job, you know, when you're new, but it's, 
a lot of times people will assume that you already know stuff that you don't know and then they get a little frustrated when they find out you don't. I ran into that with several several of the programs that they use. You know, people would say, oh, well, you know, you just go in here and you do this. And I would have to explain, well, actually, I just got access to that yesterday and I'm not quite familiar with how to use it. Oh, we should have talked to so-and-so. And I'm going, who's that? I don't know who that is. Oh, oh, well, you should. That's so-and-so. So-and-so will help you with that. So you really should have talked to them already. I don't even know who that is. Sorry, but I can't read people's minds. It's frustrating, but it, it's a process. You know, you go through it. I, I think I'm really starting to get the hang of it, though. And uh, working from home is going to be... I think it's good overall, but it's challenging, especially because, see, I have my two kids here and they do online school. They're doing online school here for the first nine weeks at least. And then we'll see after that. Um, I think they just finished week three. Is that right? Or week three or week four? No, I guess it's week four. Wow. Something like that. They started a week early this year because of, you know, the first week was really kind of dedicated to just working out all the bugs and everything of the online learning stuff. So they're here. The cats are here. Olive, my kitten, loves to jump up on my desk. I have my little home office set up downstairs. It's, uh, I decided to put it in the kitchen because that's really... It, there's good light in there. You know, I have my table in there. Um, I got my two monitors set up. I bought a desktop computer to use for everything. Um, I even bought a paper shredder. I always want an excuse to buy a paper shredder. I've never had one. I never really needed one because see, up until now, um, if I had, like if, I, you know, certain things you get in the mail, I don't want to just toss them in the trash. Because um, it's like, I feel like this needs to be shredded. Like you get a credit card application or just anything like that. I always like to shred it. Well, I would just take it into work because they always had big bins in there for the shredder. And I would just chuck them in the bins at work and I didn't need to buy a shredder. Well, I'm not going to an office anymore. So I finally got to buy a paper shredder. <laughs> I felt like a grown up. It was really, it was like a very grown up thing to purchase. Um, I liked it. I liked that. I've played with it a bit. It scares the cats to death. Every time you use it, they they scooby-doo across the floor because it's the noise it makes. It scares all three of them. They don't like it. Although Olive is funny because at first she she scooby-dooed on the floor and would run away. You know how they, you know. But now when I t she hears me turn it on, you flip the little switch. She'll come running in there and she'll look around the corner and she'll already start puffing up before I even put anything in it. She fluffs up really big like she's trying to scare the shredder and she'll turn sideways. She's trying to scare it. <laughs> but then when I stick the paper in there, she usually scooby-doos away because it makes that loud sound. But The other two just disappear. They, they don't try to challenge the shredder. Olive is very, very brave. I mean, she's she's... She's a contender. She'll, she'll go up against anybody. She doesn't run away. She went up against the HVAC folks the other day. That's the other thing I wanted to tell you. Um, yeah, she, whenever anybody comes to the house that she doesn't know, she'll, she'll either puff up and go sideways or she runs away. I don't know how she decides which to do, but she puffed up at the, the air conditioner people. <laughs> that was pretty funny. They thought that was cute. She's growing so fast. She's getting so big. Um, okay, I'll tell you about the doors and all that. Okay, so we got the interior doors put in. I'm so happy to have that done. And I'm so glad that my dad could help me with that. I cannot imagine what I would have had to pay somebody to come do that. Because it was like an all-day job to get those four doors put in. Because they all had to be cut. They all had to be cut. Every door frame in this house has a different measurement. And the door frame for my room is crooked. It is slightly crooked. I am not kidding. You can't even see it, but if you measure it, you see it. Yeah, so we had to plane it at the top to make it fit. It's so infuriating. I think like a drunken herd of wildebeest built this house. And then they're just really, 
they're just really vindictive or something and they just want to see people suffer. Anyway, but while we were doing that, this is where the cough comes in and y'all guessed right. Some people guessed this. Um, so I went into my son's room, my older son, because one of the doors we were replacing was his closet door. And that one was the worst of the four doors that we did. That door, now see, we had to replace these doors because the glue that was holding the doors together, they're not solid. The glue was just literally just crumbling and disintegrating and the doors were just coming apart like this. They were just separating. The door for his closet, when we took it off the hinges, it, it basically just, it almost completely fell apart. The inside, the pieces of wood on the inside, both just went like that. It's crazy. He hasn't been able to shut that door for months because it's just so messed up. But anyway, while we were in there, so we got the door off the hinges and then I was measuring the door frame and I happened to look up and he has a ceiling register. Uh, you know, we, all the registers are in the ceilings. For some reason, I happened to look up and I noticed that his ceiling register was multicolored and I'm looking at it. It looked tie dyed. So I'm looking at it. I said, what is going on with your uh, register? He said, what do you mean? He hadn't even noticed. Now the register itself, the cover is, is white. Now I knew this, so I'm looking at it going, why does your, why does your register, why does that cover look like a Petri dish? It was covered in mold, completely covered in mold. I said, oh dear God, how did you not notice that? See, I never go in his room. Um, I never go in there. I said, how did you not notice that? He said, I don't know. I just don't ever look up there which I think is genetic because hypothetically his father was the same way. Like he could look right at something and say, it's not here. I, you know, you know, go, go look in the cabinet and bring me the Lysol and it'll be right there. He'll open it. I don't see it. It's right freaking there. He just, he can't see anything. I don't know what that is. I think it's genetic though, because my son is the same way. Like he just doesn't notice stuff sometimes. So anyway, I said, well, that won't do. That's, that's terrible. So I, now this was at like 10 o'clock at night. I said, I can't do anything really at this point, but what I can do is go get some paper towels and some Lysol and at least clean that thing off. I can at least do that. I should have put on a mask or something before I did that, but I didn't think about it. See, I'm allergic to mold. I, I had, um, actually I rented a house in my twenties that had a mold issue and the landlord dragged his feet, didn't just, didn't seem to care, didn't want to fix it or anything. And it took months to get it straightened out. And the entire time I sounded like I had a cold, like I was always stopped up and runny nose and sneezing and coughing. After I got it cleared up though, I was all right. But, um, so I, I got the register cleaned off and then had a horrific coughing fit for like five minutes, but I got it cleaned off. And so the next morning I said, I said, okay, I'm going to call the HVAC people that did my, the work. You know, I put in a new furnace, new vents. I had zoning done in the house. This was all last year. I said, I'm going to call them and see what, what's going on. What, you know, maybe they can help me. And I'm, I'm not going to get technical about it because apparently I have a lot of HVAC people who watch my videos which is awesome, but I'll just go ahead and tell you long story short, it's a done deal. I don't need any advice. I don't need, I'm good. I'm just going to refer to things as doohickeys and watch them call it because I'm not going to get into details because then you'll, you'll tell me how I'm wrong or I shouldn't have done it or don't worry about it. It's all done. Everything is taken care of. I appreciate the help. I really do. I appreciate the advice, but it's all, it's all done. So there's nothing, there's, I don't need any advice. I'm good. Um, I work with a very reputable HVAC company. You know, they're well known. They've been around forever. They're highly rated. They're wonderful. I've had great experiences with them over the last three years. So anyway, I called them the next morning and explained the problem. And they said, we'll get somebody out there today. We'll get somebody to come look at that for you. So the guy came out. 
and I showed him the vent and he said, yeah, that's not good. In fact, we noticed that the vent was wet. Like there was like condensation on it. And he said, yeah, that's not cool. No pun intended. But So, okay. I know it's not just the furnace in the attic. There's a doohickey up there. There's dooflotchies and watchamacallits. So he goes up there and checks the watchamacallit and the dooflotchy and said, yeah, here's, you've got some leaks in your coals. And he showed me the leaks. He said, that's not good because you got water pulling up. I said, yeah, that's that's bad. And he pointed out the, the other doohickeys and some issues and said, we need to fix this. I said, okay. And then we talked about some other things. He also did a test on my air conditioner while he was here. Now, my air conditioner was old. I was really hoping I could get another year or two out of it, but he showed me, you know, look, it's your air, your compressor is about to go. Um, do you want to do that now or do you want to wait? I said, I don't want my air to go out. I said, it's been a hot summer and knowing my luck, if I leave it, we will have another super hot spell and it will, it will conk out on me. And they're back ordered on a lot of stuff and God knows how long it would take to get another one put in. I said, let's go ahead and do, let's do the dooflotchies and watch my calls up there. Once you fix that stuff, get me a new air conditioner too. And I got an I wave. Well, it's actually not here yet, but I've ordered an I wave. Um, so that, but that's, it's on back order or something. I, that it's irrelevant. But so I was not expecting to have to do all this. The good thing is my ducts are all cleaned out. The mold is gone. The the doohickeys and watchmacallits are fixed. There's no more water pooling up anywhere. All the mold is gone. It's all. It took. They were here all day. I mean, it was like an all day job, but they got everything done. I have my new air conditioner. It's massive. My God, it is. It's half again as big as the one I had. I don't know why it's so big, but it is amazing. It is amazing. Wow, the difference between this air conditioner and the one I had is unreal. How much faster it? I mean, as soon as it kicks in, it's like whoa. You can really feel it. It's great. But that was a big chunk of money that I was not expecting. <laughs> To have to spend, but oh my god, we we won't even say, we won't even say how much. I don't even want to say it was a lot. It was a lot. So when you own a house, it's always something. It's, there's always something. It seems like, but over time, I think I eventually I'm just gonna have a whole new house because I've replaced all the windows. I put in a I put in a new uh, the door down there. I've replaced doors. I've replaced the dooflotchy watch and call it stuff. I've replaced the air conditioner. Man, I've, I've replaced a lot of stuff in this house. All new duct work. I mean, it's just, it's always something when you own a house. But anyway, I have had this nagging cough for about a year, which really sucks during coronavirus because every now and then, it's just a, like a tickle in my throat, about right here, and I just start coughing, and I can't stop. It's like I, the more I breathe, the more I cough. It's just a dry tickle. It's like just a little tickle in my throat. But if you cough in public, people think you have the, the, the Rona, you know, and they back away. From, it's a good way to keep people away from you. I mean, I would never use it on purpose, but, you know, if somebody's standing right behind me in line and I start coughing, they always back up. It's awesome. Um, I had somebody do that to me. I went to Aldi today. There was this man. I swear he was about standing on the back of my shoes. I just took a step back and bumped into him and he moved. But So I've had this cough for about a year. But I had noticed just in the last three months or so, it's gotten a lot worse. It used to be that I would have a coughing fit maybe twice a week. It's gotten to the point now where, well, you know, up at, th at this point, it was like two or three times a day I was having these coughing fits. Just a dry cough and a tickle in my throat, and, I, and it would just hit me out of nowhere. And sometimes they would be really bad. And, uh, but I'm hoping that with all the, you know, getting all the ductwork, they're all cleaned out, there's no mold anymore getting everything fixed and, you know, everything's repaired and 
maybe that mold was what was making me cough. I mean, that would make sense because I, I am sensitive to it. Um, I didn't even know about it. I am so glad. I'm so glad we did the doors because I, I don't, who knows how long it would have been like that because he, he, my son hadn't even noticed it. I don't know how he didn't notice, but he didn't notice that. So I got a, I got a new register and I just took it out and put a whole new one in there and I'm going to replace I have one right above me. It's not it's not moldy, but I feel like I should replace it anyway. We're going to replace a few of the registers, but the ones I need are on back order. So hopefully, hopefully in a week or two, I'll be able to replace some of the registers around here. Because some of them, I noticed some of them downstairs look kind of rusty. It's not mold. I thought it was at first, but then we got up there and looked at it, and it was just, it, they were rusty. So I'm going to replace those two because they just look bad. So, I am hoping, you know, I'm trying to look at the bright side, like, okay, maybe with the new air conditioner, my power bill will be lower, because it's it's way more efficient than the one I had, and maybe my cough will get better, and certainly I'm glad that that moldy mess is not in my son's room anymore. I mean, that crap has been blowing into his room. Now, he hasn't had any noticeable effects from it, but... I, I'm just glad it's not in his room anymore. It was the worst in his room, I think, because his room is directly below everything up in the attic. And he keeps his door shut a lot, which the HVAC guy said probably exacerbated it because his door is always shut and the air doesn't circulate properly. So he's always in there with his door shut. He, he, he's, a, he's a teenager. So, but I'm hoping that that problem has been taken care of um, and I can get my iWave installed sometime soon whenever it's whenever they can get it a lot of stuff is on back order right now so that's that's been the big that's has taken over my life in the last week and then you know I'm I'm working every day in my old job I was only working three days a week for now, until I get established in this new job, I have agreed to work five days a week with the understanding that it's not going to continue. We have some things to, to get done first. And then hopefully I can get back into, into a normal schedule of just working three days a week. Um, I'm a contract employee and I had to prepare my first invoice this week. And that was another thing they just assumed I knew how to do. I said, I've never been a contract employee. I don't know... What kind of invoice do you need? Who do I send? Who do I send it to? You know, what what do you need? So, got that all straightened out. So I can actually get paid. That would be getting paid would be really good, especially with uh, the expense of all the air stuff, which I did not expect to have to do this month. That was not in the budget. I, I really didn't plan for that. But here we are. Um, oh, I wanted to mention too, I did a nail polish video last night, and I didn't mean to ruffle feathers with the cement colored nail polish. Apparently a lot of people like that color. I, it's like the color of cement, and the name of it is literally cemented, and I don't, I don't mean anything by it. Actually, I comment on that nail polish a lot. I, I remembered commenting on it in the past. It's almost like a running joke. I don't like the color though it, because it, it's the color of cement but if you like it that's totally cool I mean I'm not saying it's bad I'm just saying that I personally don't like it it is not my flavor of ice cream um, I'm sure if you went into my closet and looked in the big things of nail polish that I have I'm sure you could find tons of colors that you think are ugly and you would never wear but you wouldn't tell me not to wear them and I'm certainly I certainly wouldn't tell you you know don't wear cemented wear it if you want to. I think that's great. Um, it's just not for me. That's all. But yeah, I'm sure I have colors that you might not like. This is the new one. This is a blue. It's from Salon Perfect. Isn't that neat? I like it. Yeah, it's really pretty. Now my mother is even more picky when it comes to nail polish. My mother, um, she's old school. She really, the only acceptable colors of nail polish for her are pink and red. She, she would hate this. She would hate this color. She, you know, if she ever sees me wearing anything other than pink or red nail polish, she just, she just kind of makes a face like, ooh. <laughs> I said, you don't like my nails? She said, mm, I don't, I don't 
like that. I don't like that at all. That's nails. Nail polish shouldn't be that color. She's just very, uh, she's a Puritan about it, I guess. Nails, nail polish should be pink or red, nothing else. I don't agree. I, I like to do all different colors. But she, she doesn't agree with that. I can't imagine what she would say about cemented. She probably would not like it very much. But it was really nice to organize nail polish. It's the first time I've done it in at least six months. So it was it was nice. It was very nice. I miss doing that so much. I never thought I would miss it as much as I do. I really do. <sighs> so, but things, things at my job are good. Um, I've just, I've had a lot going on with, I've had the people here working on the yard. I had people here working on the air stuff and they're going to have to come back again to install that other thing. Um, and the doors and it's just been like one thing after another. Good grief. But my grass is finally growing. We had this nice soaking rain all day. We got drizzled on in our exercise class, but we just kept going. It didn't get too bad. I was afraid it was going to really start raining, but it didn't. We were fine. Um, so, but hopefully things will calm down. I keep saying that, and one day they're going to actually do it, but I'm good. I'm good. My kids are good. I'm good. My parents are good. Everybody's good. So I hope you're doing well with everything and that life is good for you. Um, I can't remember if there's anything else I wanted to talk about. Probably, but I can't think of anything right now. So I will just say farewell for now. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed it and I will see you again really soon.